skyscrapers can be standoffish when not done correctly, um, or maybe some would argue, you know, by nature. So how can tall buildings be better citizens? Uh, well, I think one of the main um, themes of the conference, actually, over the, the last two days has been around the role of, 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 of tall buildings within cities. I think they, uh, it's important, obviously, that, that their role from a long way away in terms of the skyline that they set is, is certainly in most designers' minds, and indeed many developers' minds, is, is, is pretty important. But what people are beginning to uh, talk about more and more is how they hit the ground and what public realm you have to build around them in order to make them accessible and open. Um, and as you say, um, buildings which will people can enjoy from the ground floor and from immediately around them, as well as from a long way away. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the other issue is around um, public accessibility, not just to the ground floor of, the build of skyscrapers, but right up to the very roof. Um, uh, and at uh, uh, observation platforms on the way, uh, uh, there seems to be more and more of those nowadays. It's kind of almost de rigueur that you um, allow people into your building and right to the very top, whether that's to a restaurant or to a park or to an observation platform. And all of those things bring the buildings themselves back into the city and make them part of the life of the city. Yeah. And I think that's really important. Is there something that London or, or any city should be thinking about doing um, to promote that sort of development? Or is it naturally occurring at a good enough uh, rate uh, by think, the market? I, th I, think, I think the um, planning authorities have been um, more and more conscious of this. Uh, I, th I think the market is having to react because um, I think skyscrapers uh, increasingly are becoming multi-use as well. So the market is realizing that it can't just build a building that's going to be all offices or all residential. So as soon as it becomes market use, market facing and, 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 and more mixed, um, skyscrapers automatically mm. are, are having to realize that they need to be a little bit more open to the public because they've got to bring lots of different types of people through, through the front door. Um, but certainly planning authorities, I think, are realizing more and more. Um, for instance, in London, um, a lot of the conversations around, well, there are two sets of conversations. One is, will it affect the uh, view of um, St. Paul's Cathedral? And how does that look in terms of its, um, its, its, its long view? But then the other one is, is, is what are you going to give back to the city? You know, you're taking away from the city um, space and, uh, uh, you know, and a profile of some description. So what are you going to give back to us? And how can you? Um, make sure that on the, at the ground floor you are, as you say, a good citizen and, 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 and um, that that building will provide something back to the, uh, to, to, mm. to the rest of the city citizens themselves. Tell us about the King's Cross development that you're involved with and how that fits into uh, this framework of a human city that we've been talking about. Yeah, no, that's very interesting. Thank you. Yeah, um, it's actually quite interesting because uh, we always have a bit of a joke that the, the, the building that Google are, um, are going to be building at King's Cross is actually 300 meters long. Mm -hmm. um, so it is as long as the shard is tall <laughs> um, and about the same size in terms of around about 750,000 square feet. But the difference is that it's linear and it's... Uh, um, uh, it, it, at King's Cross, we're building out over 67 acres in total. Hmm. Um, we've got wow. uh, 10, 20 new streets, 10 new squares, um, over four linear kilometers of ground floor uses, so retailers, restaurateurs, public access, all the sorts of things that we've been talking about. Um, and so there are, our whole approach has been about how the buildings hit the ground, what happens on the ground, how that public realm can be activated and can become um, a place that in many ways sets the scene for the buildings themselves. In fact, we design from the outside inwards. We've actually been designing the public realm and the streets and the squares and the spaces first and allowing the buildings to come along later and frame them afterwards. And that's a very deliberate idea around um, bringing that human scale back to cities. Mm. People experience cities at their own level. You know, either you're walking around the streets, you're walking at a level that's only two meters um, or, you know, one and a half meters up in the air. You're not 300 meters up mm -hmm. in the air. Um, and so the experience of what you see around you um, are, are, are on a city scale mm -hmm. is very much rooted in the ground floor. And that's been our approach at King's Cross. So in this case, for Google, it would be street view and not map view. <laughs> it's absolutely. So well, no, because there are no cars, so they're not allowed to drive along the oh, road. Oh, that's right. So it's yeah. mostly pedestrianized. I think we might allow driverless cars, which actually would be hmm. quite amusing. Right. Um, well, they need but, a test zone, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll have robots going up and down with, with, uh, with uh, um, 
cameras, I should imagine. So that sounds, that's a massive development. Uh, how do you make sure that it's not like an insular campus and that it's integrated into the city at large? Well, the, the, first, the first thing is to make sure that the street patterns do actually line up with, with the streets on either side of, 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 of the city. So um, at King's Cross, we are actually bounded by rail, railway lines, which makes it difficult. So some of the access, for instance, down the canal, um, you can walk along the canals all the way to Camden and, uh, uh, and, and uh, both east and west. So there's, that's integrated in. Um, so the street patterns for, allow people to walk in and out. This, the, 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 the way we manage the streets is very open and accessible. There are no gates. Um, the mix of uses is such that office buildings are next to residential buildings, which are next to educational buildings, which are next to um, uh, artistic or cultural buildings. So there's a real sort of nice mix of activity going on the whole time. So people are populating the streets um, uh, or 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Um, we very, very deliberately look to try and get this multiplicity of use and plurality of, 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 of occupation so that it doesn't kind of, you know, fill up first thing in the morning and then empty out at five o'clock in the mm -hmm. evening and then it's dead over the weekend or, or the other way around. If it was all residential, everyone would disappear off to work in the morning and the place would be dead until, you know, until Friday. Mm -hmm. So, so, so we've, we've, we've tried to use that mix of uses to, uh, to animate the place. So it's surrounded by rail lines. How does it connect into transit? On, on every end of the property? Uh, well, I mean, the, 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 the railway lines themselves terminate at King's Cross and St. Pancras, mm. which are the two of the major stations mm. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the UK. Um, in fact, there's a bit of a Twitter argument going on as to whether or not St. Pancras International Station is better than Grand Central, actually, <laughs> in terms of just the, 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 the building itself. It's a fabulous, fabulous 19th century building. Um, there are more uh, underground lines or subway lines going through King's Cross and St Pancras than any other um, station on the whole of the network in, mm. in London. So there are more people can get there locally. Um, there are buses, uh, there are national rails, there's international rails are so coming into St Pancras. is high speed one, which is the main high speed route to directly to ba Paris uh, mm -hmm. and to Brussels. So uh, it's incredibly well connected. Uh, mm. A lot of people can get to King's Cross and St Pancras. And, and our job has been to make sure that when they get there, they've got a lot of things to do so that we can hold them in that sort of, uh, in hmm. that central area. What challenges do you see? It sounds like there's there's a lot going for the site, right? It's going forward, there's a lot going for London. Mm -hmm. um, what, what challenges does the, the King's Cross project and, and does London at large face in well, the next five to 10 years? King's Cross, uh, uh, I, I, will I, I hope, is in a situation where we've been working on it for 15 years. Yeah. Um, uh, the last seven or eight years have seen significant construction and there's probably about five years left to go. So I would hope that we've got to a point where, um, you know, assuming that we don't have a major crash of some description in the, in, the, in, the, in the market in the next sort of three or four years, that we'll be able to see it through to the end. Um, I think the major challenge for London, and it's a significant one, I think, for all um, major cities, uh, assuming that there's a continuing investment in infrastructure and transport, which there has been, which is, which is certainly on the cards, is around providing housing for people at affordable levels. And I don't mean necessarily just social housing by this. Mm -hmm. I mean, for people who are finding it, I mean, you know, the average price of a house in London now is extraordinarily high. And you need to sort of have, you know, two, two incomes and probably the bank of mum and dad, as we call it, to mm -hmm. sort of help um, uh, pay, the, pay the deposit. And still be um, relatively and far out. And it still is relatively far out. I think they're talking about people, first time buyers in the UK having an average age of around about 34 or mm -hmm. something like that now. So people, a lot of people are renting. Um, we don't have a very established rental, um, or what you call multifamily um, sector over in the UK as you do over here in the States. So um, I, I think that that's got to be one of the key things. People are just mm -hmm. having to travel in from further and further away because that's all mm -hmm. they can afford to do. So providing that housing stock, which will then get people close to the jobs where there's a lot of growth going on, they then stay, they stay in the city so that they'll animate the restaurants and they'll go to the theaters and they'll fill the cinemas and do everything else. Is that a problem that private sector developers can step in and, and Oh yeah, solve? most definitely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, at Argent, our next generation of projects, which we're looking at, which we, um, uh, I showed a picture of today, is at um, uh, uh, Brent Cross Cricklewood, which is about 10, 15, um, minutes up the, uh, up the railway line from King's Cross and St Pancras. It's an opportunity to build 8,000 homes um, through a 4 million square feet of, of, of commercial space as well. But again, a real sort of town centre type um, uh, 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 development with 
with, in, in an area which, where traditionally the values are probably about a third of the values in, in, mm. in the King's Cross. So that's uh, an opportunity to, 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 to build a community which can then um, get access to sort of the centre of London. And there are lots of those around um, from sort of Canary Wharf right down through mm -hmm. Croydon, east and west mm -hmm. around the sort of the slightly outer boroughs of London. And that can be profitable for, for a developer. Oh yeah, most definitely, because I mean, it all comes down to land value. So of course it's mm -hmm. the price of the land mm -hmm. is going to be significantly less. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a lot more of it than in the what we call the Zone One area, which yeah. is the very, very centre of, of, of London. Right, and so the very centre of London, then affordable housing there would have to probably come from social housing, or what in the US would be public housing. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, if at all, frankly, I mean, right. there's, there's hardly uh, there there are places where there's a lot of that historically, and that will obviously continue. Um, and there are uh, uh, part of our planning or entitlement arrangements are that if you build some uh, market-facing housing, you have to build some affordable housing as well. So we will continue to be doing that. But frankly, the problem is that there's just less and less room for it. Hmm. Um, and so everybody's being forced a little bit further out, frankly. Hmm. Uh, and that's, that's, no great, that's no bad thing, because it means that there's a, the sort of ripple effect of, of value and of um, regeneration moves away from the places where it's traditionally been um, uh, concentrated and does go out into those outer boroughs where there's plenty of opportunity, plenty of space, some, you know, lots of land which is available, well connected, um, and you know, nice little communities of their own which kind of have a chance to, to flourish.